Get ready for another video in Alex's garage. Alright, so in my previous couple of videos I was doing the cooling system and uh, the next thing that goes in here is the hoses. But before I get to the hoses, you can see there's a big open space here between uh, the radiator and the um, the <laughs> harmonic balancer, if you want to call it that. It's a pulley. Um, but anyway, this big area right in here is um, supposed to be mm -hmm. occupied by what they call a mud shield. Let me show you what the old mud shield looked like. So this is the one that used to be in there. I am not putting that back in. That thing's hideous. It's all rat eaten and got crap all over it and uh, it's falling apart. So I am not going to put that back in there. What I tried to do initially was I mocked up an aluminum one and that was my, my initial intention was to put aluminum one in there. But that, uh, that falls short of the, the mark as far as I'm concerned. So uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk you through how to make a pattern, how to cut a piece of aluminum, and we're going to make a new one out of this diamond sheet. This is already polished, so it's nice and shiny. And um, it has it's a bit more rigid. Um, and I think it'll be a lot, a, lot, a, lot, a lot better looking once we get that in there. So uh, first thing that I did is I took some measurements and I cut out a template. Let me pull this one out. This template out of cardboard is, uh, it, you know, anytime you're doing any kind of sheet metal work, cardboard is your friend. Uh, it has a bend right in here so you can get it down in there. Come on. There you go. All right. So when I took my initial measurements from the top over here, uh, of, I'll show you a quick little diagram. The top to corners here, they were showing at uh, 18 and 3 quarters. Uh, but once I got the template in there, you can see there's a bit of a gap here. Although I got the, the, the curve pretty good. I should get it in there. Hang on. Get down here. There we go. So I got the, I got the curve pretty good, but the, the bottom, turns out, is, is 19 inches from side to side. So there's a bit of a... I don't know, just kind of difference in the measurements from top to the bottom, which is why you write, you build a template. <laughs> you do all your testing on um, easily uh, manipulated and inexpensive materials. And then once you get it all laid out, then you can do it in the good stuff. Now, the way this works is it has this little flap, and that flap is supposed to go all the way down, and there's a little hole right here where there's a screw goes through that and connects the flap. Um, and then from this flat surface to this flat surface, there's kind of like a chin guard that goes down and gets connected in here to protect the uh, harmonic balancer. Uh, so there's two pieces. This is going to be a two-piece template. And uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and start cutting up the metal and uh, lay it in there. And then we'll take a measurement for this chin strap here, this piece that goes from these edges right here to close this triangle gap here. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting uh, cutting that up and then we'll break back into the video. Alright, check and recheck your measurements and then start cutting. These uh, pair of shears it just cuts through the stuff like, like scissors through uh, wrapping paper. It uh, doesn't take a lot of effort. Tell you what I should be doing right now is I should be wearing gloves. I am prone to cutting myself, and I just see that happening. Matter of fact, let me pause the video and put some gloves on. I got myself nervous. Safety first. <laughs> you want to believe that?
This is not a very thick gauge of aluminum, uh, so it's really easy to shear. But having the little diamonds in there helps to make it a little more rigid. It's a little less floppy than the one that I mocked up earlier. Kind of like a skill saw, you kind of have to cut past the curve in order to get rid of the, take your, your turn. Same kind of thing. So this bit of material that I got at the hardware store is exactly the right length. It's uh, one foot from one end to the other. So it makes it like I don't have to cut the long length anyway. A little bit easier. Okay, so you can see there's uh, just a little bit of deflection on some of these corners, and you can bend that really easy. It's uh, not, not impossible, but uh, now I don't want to affect any of the the flat surfaces because I need a good mirror finish on that. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to bend this right along here, so that we can get that uh, that dip that goes underneath the um, uh, harmonic balancer. Once we get all that all mocked up, then I'll be able to get good measurements about the angle that gets created here, um, so that we can create that that little chin strap section, as I was referring to, that goes between here and there, um, and uh, the connections that we have to make for those across here are going to be done with rivets um, and uh, so let's uh, go ahead and bend that up and see what it looks like find a nice flat area here on my workbench put these two corners in there just kind of lean on it Look at that. Just like I knew what I was doing. I'm going to bend this a little 
further than where it wants to go and I'll be able to bend it back once I get in the car. All right, that should be a pretty good mock-up of what we're looking at. Um, let's go ahead and put this in the car and see what it looks like so we can make some measurements. All right, so this is just placed in there. It's not bolted or anything. I have an adequate clearance here. The old one had a distance between this, this crease and this edge was five and a half inches. And uh, if we get that into the corner here, that should give us plenty of clearance here at the, at the radiator. Now, you can see there's a bit of a bow here. And uh, I, I think I need to take a little bit out of these corner edges here just to make them so that they fit a little bit better. So I'm going to trim it up a little bit. And then we'll slide it back in and get a good measurement. All right. Looks pretty good on the first go. All right. So that's how that will fit in there. See, we got nice curved all these little joints. Everything matches up. It's pretty close anyway. The, uh, the next thing here is to marry this up. It adjusts a little bit back and forth. We need to marry this up with the screw holes. There's going to be a screw here and a screw here. And I bought some nice um, nickel plated cap screws to put on there so you don't see the threads. Um, and so right now they're kind of teetering on those um, the screws from the old system. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and crawl underneath and we'll get a good mark of where those holes are as, as it lies in this position. And uh, yeah, see it kind of moves around. So once we get those screw holes in, then we'll know exactly where it's all going to lie. And we'll drill those holes and um, put the cap screws in after we do the second part here, which is like the little chin strap that goes underneath the pulley. Um, all right, so let's move forward. All right, so there you have it. Those screw holes are in place. Screws are poking out. Now, uh, the old system had uh, some really long screws in there. You can see how long that is. When disassembly, the two in the front is sheared off, and uh, that's okay because we're going to put cap screws on these. But these, these are too long, so I'm going to be cutting these down with the Dremel. So uh, I'll show you a really neat little trick on that. Uh, the trick when you when you cut a screw short is you, you want to be able to use the threads, right? <laughs> so um, when you're doing that, you want to put a nut on it below where you're going to cut it. So that after you've cut it, you want to take that nut and back it off, and it will clean the threads for you as you go. Um, and you know, obviously, when you cut them before you pull that nut off, you want to grind it so they have a bevel on there. Makes it real easy for the for the nut to get on there. So uh, the next thing on this is uh, the the old one. It's a bit of a shine. <laughs> Got to change my perspective. The old one has a, a hole right in this area for the return line from the radiator. It's the lower line that comes up from here and connects to the water pump right here. So we got to cut a big hole in here and I got to fashion a grommet because we don't want to have any uh, any wear uh, wearing on that um, that hose. And then on this side where the expansion tank is, there's a hose that comes down from here and exits right through here. So we got to put two more holes in here one big one, one small one, um, and then we'll be able to work on what I've been calling this little chin strap thing it goes from here to the other side. Uh, I don't know if I have enough of the uh, the diamond uh, plate, but uh, I do have some regular aluminum and we can we can put that in there and make it do the best we can. So there we go. Moving on. All right, so there you have it. Uh, nicely cut hole. So I used a, a hole cutting saw. Uh, to cut those nice round edges, uh, and that should give me relief for the for the radiator hose, that uh, return hose. Let me show you real quick what that looks like. So this right here is the my old nasty uh, radiator hose. Uh, basically, this goes down into that little hole right there, and this goes on the return line to the water pump. Um, this is. Kind of sticking out funny because it's not actually on the the line, but uh, that's where it will fit. 
Uh, I'm probably going to still put a little piece of rubber tubing around here just to make a grommet. It'll just clean up nice, but uh, I think it uh, I think it looks pretty good. All right, uh, and here's the uh, the relief for the uh, um, expansion tank relief hose. That'll go right down in that little hole right there. All right, so now we need to take measurements and start working on um, the little strap that goes from here to here underneath the um, ex the uh, harmonic balancer, um, and uh, that should be the end of that. We'll throw a few rivets in right here and right here, and then we'll put a couple of rivets as it uh, joins up with the, the down part right here. Uh, and that will be it. We'll throw little caps on and uh, we'll, we'll pro progress and I'll go ahead and start working on that strap right now. All right, so before I get a little too far with this, I've gone ahead and transposed a lot of measurements on the back of this in case you all want to make one like this. Um, first off, the, um, the width at the widest side is 18 and 7 eighths. That's from this side to that side. <clears throat> Each of these holes are offset from the edge 7 eighths of an inch. 7 eighths of an inch. This bottom hole is 3 quarters of an inch off from this edge and they are 4 inches separated. So the the center hole of this this one here is 7 eighths by 4 and 3 quarters from this bottom edge. So you'll be able to, you'll be able to place that hole. This is 3 quarters by 7 eighths, 3 quarters by 7 eighths. <laughs> Alright, so this crease right here is creased at uh, five and three quarters of an inches up <clears throat> and uh, this apex of this this little corner right here is uh, four and one quarter inches uh, from the edge now I'm not going to calculate this you have to kind of figure that out on your own it doesn't necessarily need to be a curve I just kind of did that to make it look nice um, from this top edge here to the bottom edge here is nine and five eighths the um, the top of this crown right here is three and a half inches, and this flap is nine inches total in length. Um, you know, center that, and, and then you'll be able to do your math on that. Uh, but that is the uh, the basic layout of this. If you want to make one of these on your own, um, hopefully this gives you enough that you can get in the ballpark. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, do the. Uh, the connection that, that, that goes around the uh, uh, harmonic balancer now. It actually, this, this flap goes down and connects to the um, steering cross member, um, um, that part of the frame. And uh, there'll be a hole right in here that you'll screw right into it. But uh, underneath the harmonic balancer, it, it's going to be kind of, on the other side, there'll be a little flap over here couple of rivets in here and they'll, they'll hold that in place. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Alright, so I uh, took some measurements. This is where the bottom of the harmonic balancer, um, there's a, a frame member that um, that's where this meets up um, right here. So everything below here is, is, is on that frame member. As a matter of fact, a, I'm going to drill a little hole right here for, the, um, for that screw to, to connect and hold that. Um, Instead of mending an entire uh, piece all the way along this thing and then back up again with you know rivets through there, um, and you know changing the material to something else because I ran this is all I had left was this. Um, what I did instead was I made two, these two little L brackets with uh, flanges on them. These little flanges are uh, going to be able to accept uh, a rivet. So the way that the flanges work is um, you set one under like this and one over the flange here will receive a rivet um, on this side and then we'll put two rivets on this surface right here there will be no physical rivets that you'll be able to see from the top i think that would be probably the better uh, solution because then you don't have rivets all over the place um, so anyway that's uh that's the plan i've made two of these one for either side Here's the other one right there. And these are custom for each side. Again, one, one flange above and one below. And uh, 
that's that's just kind of how the joint will work. Um, we'll go ahead and drill some holes and, and drive some rivets and we'll put those in there. Now what you'll notice is that there's a gap right here. Um, it doesn't really match up. And again, it's just because I ran out of material. But I think that will be completely um, covered um, with the frame member. And as far as mud goes, this, this will protect it from the mud. So I don't think that that's really going to be a problem. Uh, we'll see what it looks like when I get it in place. It'll probably even make it easier to uh, install. So um, let's go ahead and uh, throw some rivets in there and then uh, see how this comes out. All right, there you have it. A couple more little measurements here. These little flanges are uh, three and a half at the bottom. Before the, be the, before the break, it's eight inches. And at the break, it's two and a half inches thick. They taper. Obviously, we put some just kind of you know, flanges on the end here to receive these rivets. From the finished side, this is what we're looking at right here. See, this is not even connected. Um, doesn't really need to be. This is rigid, that's rigid. Um, and uh, there's no visible rivets across the top, so there's not any uh, visual pollution. Um, and uh, I did add a little bit of a bend to this last little bit of a tab here so that um, when I bolt it in on the bottom down here, there's a little hole that we're going to put right there. It'll have a flat surface uh, to grab onto. So let's go ahead and put it in the car so you can get, get an idea of what it looks like. All right, there you go, all installed. Got my little uh, cap nuts in there. See the, I had a little flare. There's no visible rivets anywhere except when you start looking this direction, you can see those rivets. Uh, got this nicely cut. Got a good, uh, a good pattern there against that curve. Really happy with the way it, it turned out. Uh, so anyway, there you go. Um, this uh, hardware cost me um, under thirty dollars. I want to say uh, uh, the, the sheet, the the sheet of uh, diamond aluminum, uh, diamond plate, was only twenty five dollars. Um, if you were to buy the plastic one, or actually it's ABS plastic that they sell at Moss, it's sixty dollars. So. Um, you know, I think being cost-effective solution, I think it looks better than uh, if you were to get the plastic one, uh, in my eye. So, um, there you go. Any questions on this, please uh, shoot them at me. I'd be glad to answer them. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you want any more good content like this, make sure you subscribe. I have fun working on my cars and I want to share it with you. Have a good day.